to call the meeting to order at this time. Mr. Ease, would you be so kind as to do the invocation for us tonight? Let's all stand, please. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. We thank you for the salvation that you give us in Christ. We thank you for these men and these women, Lord, that you have selected, Lord, to lead this city and this community. Lord, I pray that you would be providential toward them, give them wisdom and the decisions that need to be made. Lord, as you know, the, the, the status of this city and town, and Lord, we need men more to lead in such manner. Lord, I pray that you that the citizens of this town will be submissive, Lord, to the will of the leaders that you appointed. Lord, that you will be glorified in each and everything that is done. And we ask this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Remain standing, please. <laughs> Mr. Crawford, lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge to allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda tonight is the reading of the minutes of the previous council meeting. If members of council have had an opportunity to review these, I will entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. Next item on the agenda, communications from the mayor. I have a few things that is going to fill my slot tonight, but first of all, thank everyone for being here tonight. Uh, first part, I am going to turn over to Chief Helton at this time. I think he's going to introduce a few gentlemen to us. Good afternoon, good evening, Mayor, Council. I want to introduce to you as we start the evening with a few introductions for you. As you know, this uh, council was highly supportive of the police department and the city as we looked at restructuring and putting a, a pay plan and a structure in place that would be supportive of acquiring new police officers and retaining the good ones that we have. Uh, since 2018, uh, with people retiring and things of that nature, it's been a busy year for us. Uh, I wanted to at least introduce you to some of our new promoted supervisory level positions and some new officers with us at the department. Uh, we we want to wait a, at least a certain period that they get through with us so that we know they're at least going to be here to stay introduced to you. So we don't, we, as soon as we put them through a process, we don't bring them immediately. Um, so I have a few for you tonight. First one's Marcus Alford. Officer. Officer Alford has come to us. He's been here since August of 2018. He previously served at Ringo Police Department, and most recently we, we acquired him from Walker County Sheriff's Office. I notice he's fit your criteria since you've been here, Chief Helton. He's kind of tall, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I can't commit to the height, though. <laughs> he has approximately four years law enforcement. He currently serves on one of our day shifts. He's jumped right in with the department with very few adjustments, and uh, you'll, you'll be seeing his face out there in the daytime hours. He got a compliment as, as recent as last late last week from a lady that he assisted at uh, Sonic with a broken down vehicle and had yet to write the letter for him, but I'm just telling him now he'll have one on the way. So uh, he's already serving your citizens well out there. Ethan Sorrell uh, came to Fort Oakthorpe Police Department, fresh from the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he served as an MP there. He's received numerous awards, recognitions, and trainings. He completed the United States Army and the United States Marine Corps Military Police Schools. Most recently attained the rank of captain and is continuing to serve in the Marine Corps Reserve, serving us all. Uh, he entered the Fort Oglethorpe Police Academy recruit program that we started last year. Uh, he attended the police academy at Forsyth late uh, 2018. He graduated, became our first police academy graduate on behalf of the Fort Oakford Police Department in about 18 years that we put through. He represented the city very well there. He's recently, he's just about to complete his field training officer program. He's got about a week to go, about a week or so, and he'll be done with that, and he'll be out on his own. Um, 
He's also received a bachelor's degree from Armstrong Atlanta State Atlantic State University. Mm -hmm. Good to have him with us. Mm -hmm. Good. Justin Ruth. Happy to be here. Justin Ruth started with us in January of 2019. He served at Catoosa County Sheriff's Office as a deputy sheriff there. Has about four years law enforcement experience. Justin's cur also currently serving on one of our day shifts. He also jumped right in with very few adjustments. He already knew your roads, already knew your city, already been serving you in this community. So uh, and probably knows half the people out here as well just because of his experience in the area. Good officer joining us. Then we have Shane Fan, Lieutenant Fan, comes to us. Uh, he joined us February, just a month ago, 2019, after having served the Catoosa County Sheriff's Office for 20 years. He's most recently served as their trainer at the Sheriff's Office. Now he's going to serve as Fort Overport's trainer. He served uh, agencies all around this region through your Sheriff's Office. He's done a fantastic job, as well as the Sheriff's Office always does. And he served many a persons there. Trained me while I was there with their Sheriff's Office, in fact. Uh, he's, he's a senior trainer. He's a master trainer. He brings 15-plus instructor certifications to the department. And he's jumped right in uh, and serving us, and we look forward to him training our folks as well as people from around this region. I have two new uh, other administrative persons I'd like you to meet in case you don't know. They've been with us for a number of years, but your new patrol captain is Johnny Lamb. Council. Yeah, I understand. He's got some other family here tonight, too, I think. Someone's yeah. been named. They're all here. <laughs> hey, you're my junior. It's been a pleasure serving this city. I look forward to retiring. Thank you. 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 Thank
So tonight, the mayor and the city council would like to present Macy Gregg with this uh, proclamation. And the proclamation says, whereas Macy Gregg is a senior at Lakeview for Oglethorpe High School, and she has demonstrated exceptional leadership in her academic and athletic career in soccer, volleyball, track, and basketball, and whereas her successes include three consecutive years named to the six AAA all-region teams and volleyball and basketball, whereas she was the 2017 to 2018 Catoosa County Female Athlete of the Year, and whereas Macy is the all-time leading scorer for women's basketball in the history of LFO High School with 1,622 points, 449 rebounds, 167 assists, 236 steals, and 64 blocks. Now, therefore, by this proclamation, the mayor of the city of Fort Oglethorpe proclaims Macy Gregg a local multi-sport superstar and hereby expresses the appreciation of himself and the citizens of our fine city to Macy for her many contributions. Feathers up. Come on up, Coach. Get in this picture. And Mr. Eves, the athletic director. I have seen this girl play. She can fill it up. I want to know one thing. If you play your daddy, do y'all fall off and over the ball? Who's going to shoot? Awesome. Guys, you can look over this. Come on, Jenny. Yeah, you look pretty, Coach. Hold on, let Jenny get in there. I'll come on the side here. Thank you. <laughs> Look at me first and we'll get Adam next, okay? Okay, now look at him. Greg, you said a little bit to your right. Somebody else got you called short tonight. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. congratulations. That's so awesome. It's good to see you. Good job, Drew. Good to see you, Chris. Good to see you, Chris. Yeah. Good to see you. Absolutely. Congratulations. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. We will take just a few minutes. I know a lot of y'all probably don't want to stay around for all this business thing. And so, uh, <laughs> Just feel free to go ahead and leave. We'll take a few minutes, and y'all y'all may want to go celebrate somewhere with her. So, <laughs> we're, congratulations! We're not it at all. You Thank, Thank y'all. Uh -huh. Awesome. Uh huh. Thank you. Hey, you good to see you. I didn't recognize you sitting back there in the cat. I'm, I'm old, but don't tell nobody. Uh -huh. Thank y'all. So I wouldn't Thank tell anybody. <laughs> The, the good thing is you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We all have to thank you. You're just as pretty as she ever was. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Here comes old man. <laughs> old man. Appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, Very thank nice. you, brother. Hey. You're doing all right. Hey, how are you? Thank you, ma'am. Absolutely. Y'all take care. I know I'd empty a room, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> All righty, our next item on the agenda is zoning matters. We have none tonight. Our next item is ordinances. Ordinance number one is the second reading of ordinance number 2019-05. Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 2019-05, rezoning, be it ordained by the mayor and council of the city of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, and is hereby ordained by authority thereof, section one, that the following property owned by Goodlick Family Partners, LP, and known as number two Forest Road, map 0003F, 047000 is rezoned to a C2 zoning. C2 
said property is particularly scribed in a deed attached to his Exhibit A. If any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect or impair the other parts of this ordinance unless it clearly appears that the other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. Section 3, that this ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by the Mayor and Council. Second reading tonight, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Tuts. Item number two under ordinances is the second reading of ordinance number 2019-06. Mr. Stultz. Ordinance number 2019-06, rezoning, be it ordained by the Mayor and Council of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, and is hereby ordained by authority thereof, Section 1, that the following property owned by Wanda A. Harwood and Brenda A. Mathis and known as 1565 Deach Road, map 0013D002, is rezoned to a PM zoning. This property is particularly described in Exhibit A attached to this ordinance. Section 2, if any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect or impair the other parts of this ordinance unless it clearly appears that such other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. Section 3, this ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by mayor and council. Second reading, mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. Item number three under ordinances is the second reading of ordinance number 2019-07, Mr. Stokes. Ordinance number 2019-07, repeal of existing Chapter 30 courts and adoption of a new Chapter 30 courts. An ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances, City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, Chapter 30 courts to provide for certain revisions, to provide for the provisions therein as authorized by state law, to provide for for the Office of the Prosecuting Attorney for the City of Fort Oakthorpe, to provide for the Office of Public Defender for the City of Fort Oakthorpe, to provide for modifications, to provide for the severability, to repeal conflicting ordinances or parts thereof, to provide for an adoption effective date and for all other purposes allowed by law. Whereas the duly elected governing authority of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia is authorized under Article 9, Section 2, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution of the State of Georgia, the Official Code of Georgia, and Annotated 36353 and the Charter of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, to adopt reasonable ordinances to protect and improve the public health, safety, welfare, and aesthetics of the citizens of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia, and whereas the duly elected governing authority of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, Georgia is vested in the City Council, composed of a mayor and five council members, and whereas is it hereby ordained by the governing authority of the City of Fort Oakthorpe, whereas the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 30, Courts, is hereby amended by repealing in entirety and by adopting a new chapter 30. Next week, Mayor, will be the long reading. This ordinance is available at the clerk's office. It's quite extensive, providing for new organization with respect to the court uh, in the city of Fort Oakport. If any part of this ordinance shall be held to be invalid or unconstitutional, such invalidity or unconstitutionality shall not affect or impair other parts of this ordinance, unless it clearly appears that such other parts are wholly and necessarily dependent upon the part held to be invalid or unconstitutional. This ordinance shall take effect from and after its adoption by the Mayor and Council. This second reading. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. <coughs> Just a reminder, I know Mr. Stokes mentioned it, but... Uh, this ordinance is quite lengthy. That's why we've had it available in the court's office. It will be available, I mean, in the clerk's office Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. If anyone in the public would like to come by and, and view it at your leisure, uh, feel free to. You know, it's, normally we don't do it because most of the ordinances are usually kind of brief. This one is quite lengthy. It would probably take 30 or 40 minutes for Mr. Stoltz to read it. We'd probably have to get a little Oscar tank for him to go <laughs> through <laughs> But it is available in the clerk's office if anyone would like to look at it. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is resolutions. We have none. Next item is unfinished business. We have none. Next item is reading the city clerk of any communications. We have none. Next item on the agenda is new business. Item number one under new business, proposed approval to purchase HVAC unit. Mr. Quarles. 
Department of Building, Planning, and Zoning recommends approval of a 30 plan HVAC unit, 2010 unit. It serves a central area of City Hall, part of DFACS, and part of the court area, the courtroom area. The unit currently is a 1983 uh, original equipment. This new uh, unit will come with new curb adapters and they'll also need a crane to, to install them on the roof. It's going to be a pretty good job. It, it'll also have an economizer too. It's something that will keep the compressor from wearing out. Price, sir. Sir. Got the price there. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. $31,000. $30.22. I have a motion to approve. Motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Save us it, some. It'll save us some money. Isn't this the second big unit we've replaced? Rick, didn't we replace one on this side? Yeah, there was one. Two years uh, ago? Yeah, when I first came on. Yeah, we, we, How many more does that leave? Well, we have uh, of, the big, of the big ones. <laughs> well, we have 12 old units that are probably uh, 10 pounds or bigger that are 1983. So we have 12. We replaced uh, two in the evidence room, and we replaced uh, one in the IT area. That was a mini split, so there's still several up there. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. Item number two under new business, proposed approval to purchase server. Mr. Ballou. From Mayor and Council and supporting staff, uh, I come before you tonight to, for your approval to purchase a Titans commercial server with the Windows server in 2019. Uh, the price will be $7,387. This will replace the server that we have now, which the software on it will run out December the 31st of this year. Uh, the server for the new software is not equipped to handle the new software. Uh, so we uh, would like to have your approval to purchase a server. This also has the gas boy on it and the operating system for the pumps and stuff. Thank you, Chief Blue. I have a motion to approve. Motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. Later. Item number three under new business MOU Sexual Assault Center. Chief Help. In Mayor and Council, this is a recommendation from our office uh, that we approve another yearly agreement with the Sexual Assault Victims Advocacy Center. There's no change from last year or the years prior. Uh, it's just continuing the service that we provide them. We point victims to resources through this center and uh, people in three counties in this region uh, and each city participate in sending their victims for the service. It does require a yearly agreement for them to obtain grant funds. Nothing's changed from the year. No expenditures from the budget that are not already budgeted for. Thank you, Chief Helton. I have a motion to approve. Motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item number four under new business agreement contract with Gunbusters LLC. Chief Helton. Mayor Council, this is an uh, organization that, our, you know, as just reminding purposes, our department joined the International Association of Property and Evidence last year. We sent the department's first persons to be trained and members of this organization. It's the highest level of property and evidence persons that we know out there, frankly, that, that are in law enforcement that we've become aware of at all. So we wanted to be on that standard. In keeping with that, as they were going through their training, uh, they realized this company was out there that's called Gunbusters Firearms Pulverizer. And what they do uh, for departments, if departments choose to use their service, is at no charge to the departments, they'll f uh, take any firearms that are el eligible to be destroyed. They have to have gone through the process, and, and 
we've gone through that process with our city attorney or multiple layers of what you have to do before you can destroy firearms. Uh, we've gone through those legal steps. Uh, we've now narrowed down a list of 35 firearms. This company merely uh, documents that whole procedure. We're, what we're doing is what we believe is adding a layer of integrity. Departments can take these and destroy them ourselves. We could take them over to our city shop and cut them up and do various things, but what we believe this does is, is brings a third party in that videotapes this, documents this from A to Z for us, and uh, adds a separate layer of integrity that we'd like to have in place. The only thing they get out of it is they're able to salvage a few parts of each one of these guns and they get the scrap for it. Uh, but most of, the, most of them routed down and destroyed and we, we get the final evidence of that keeping our files. Each one of these guns has either been uh, proven to be dysfunctional, they've been turned in by somebody else where somebody has died and they don't no longer want the guns. Uh, 10 to 12 of them since the year 2016. Um, Chattanooga has been participating in what's called the Nobbin Network, where they're connecting firearms to crimes, shell casings, bullet fragments, things along those lines. Uh, we took the weapons that were involved in this, in these cases since 2016, and we submitted uh, firearms casings. We took them down to the uh, Shooter's Depot, collected that evidence, submitted those to the Nobbin system in Chattanooga. We didn't come up with any hits, but we wanted to be thorough before we considered destroying firearms. If we could help close the case, we wanted to do that. Uh, we did, through this process, find one that had a very delayed reporting and had actually been uh, some time later reported stolen from Dade County, Georgia. So we returned that one back uh, to owners. But we've exhausted all other means. We, we do not feel safe in trying to sell these because we don't know the condition of them, frankly. They've either been taken off convicted felons when we got them or convicted afterwards. We can't return them to them. Or they've been found in situations where you don't know what the conditions of those guns are, and we wouldn't want to put them back out in the hands of public. By no means are we destroying every gun we get. There's quite a few that got sent back into the system, and we'll, we'll either continue to try to find owners, but but these 35, I believe you have the listing in your files. Uh, we'd like to recommend this one-time agreement with this company. Each time, this agreement, if we're going to do it with this company, it has to be approved every time. These are only one-time matters. Thank you, Chief Help. I have a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimous. Next item on the agenda is city manager's report. I'm uh, going to have to uh, take up a little bit for Miss Sink, and she's. We've had our year-end report and, uh, scheduled on the last two meetings, and we were going to do them under my comments, and we were kind of overloaded a lot like we were tonight, <laughs> but. Uh, we, we need to go ahead and make these public records. So under her comments, I've asked her tonight to do our year-end report briefed in force so that everybody out there will have those numbers if you need them. So Ms. Simpkins, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. This is a, a summary of our 2018 budget. And of course, our, our fiscal year is January 1st to December 31st, 2018. Um, revenue from all funds totaled 16 million $34,955.90. This is 93% of the adopted revenue budget for all funds, which was $17,259,848.49. Expenses from all funds totaled $14,234,881.84, or 82.5% of the adopted budget of $17,259,848.49. Our two major funds, the General Fund and the Water and Sewer Fund, um, I'll start with the General Fund. Actual income for the year versus budgeted was 99.7% of budget, primarily due to the following, and local option sales tax came in over budget, licenses and permit revenue came in almost 14% over budget due to um, some new large commercial developments in the city in 2018 um, and also due to a change in the in the fee schedule for permits 
court fines collected were almost 3% over budget. Interest income was 38% over budget due to the increase in interest rates on our cash reserves. Um, Comcast franchise fees were under budget by 8% and they're currently being audited, audited by the Georgia Municipal Association and we expect to collect some additional revenue um, for 2018 and also in the, in the future. So we expect an increase in the franchise fee revenue. Um, the adopted budget also include a, included a planned use of fund balance and the amount of $393,319.20. However, we did not need to use that fund balance. Um, so it remains in fund balance. Actual expenditures in the general fund were less than budgeted by approximately 16%. Um, there were several departments that came in under budget, including police, fire, uh, municipal court, building planning and zoning. Some of this was due to vacant positions. Um, it's hard to stay fully staffed in a, during an entire year. Um, also, um, our part-time firefighters and volunteers in the fire department um, were under budget due to, you know, just some lack of understanding of exactly how many hours we should budget for some of those part-time positions. Um, we received a credit of $164,398 from Cigna Health Insurance as a result of our 2017 claims being lower than our premiums. Um, as a result, this credit was applied to our 2018 expense, resulting in each department being under budget and employee benefits for all of 2018. Fund balance for the general fund overall increased by $1,389,749.40. The water and sewer fund actual income received versus budgeted was under budget for the year by 7%. This is mostly due to a reduction in income of $263,785.46 due to the disposition of assets, pump stations that were not fully depreciated. Um, the adopted budget included a planned use of, of net position in the amount of $270, $270,945, and this income was not needed, so it was not used. Actual expenses were under budget by 14%. This was primarily due to unspent contingency funds and a budgeted vacant position. The difference between revenues and expenses in 2018 for the water and sewer fund is positive and in the year $1,442,315 difference between revenues and expenses. Uh, and the SPLOS fund in, in 2018, we spent $1,756,278 in 2014 SPLOS funds on capital improvements. You all approved a new fuel and pump station system, document management software, a creation of a GIS database, police replacement vehicles and radios, fire turnout gear, radios and fire hose, engineering for an extension of our multi-use trails, easement acquisition for the Lafayette Streetscape Improvement Project, a new jet truck, local road repaving, water and sewer bond payment, and other equipment. At the end of the year, um, the SPLOS fund available balance was $777,000. And T-SPLOS, in June of 2018, we began receiving revenue from Walker County's T-SPLOS. In 2018, the total T-SPLOS revenue received was just over $12,000. We have not spent any of those uh, T-SPLOS funds in Walker County yet. Um, and that's a summary of our major funds and our positive financial results from 2018 Mayor and Council. Thank you, Ms. Simpkins. Now, did you have anything scheduled under your regular comments? I do. I want to announce, um, I know Chris McKeever, McKeever is here. I've got a couple, some copies of these events if anybody's interested, and we'll leave some up front in the water and sewer department. But um, the public is invited to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Fort Oglethorpe becoming a city with the showing of the 1945 World War II movie about the Women Army Corps, Keep Your Powder Dry. Um, this movie will be shown Saturday, March 23rd at 4.30 p.m. at Liberty Baptist Church. Admission is free, and members of the 1st WAC Battalion will be attending in full-dress uniforms. So Scott and I will be there. We hope to see you guys there. 
And then I've got one other. This is History Unearthed Battlefield Archaeology, The Six Battles of Curland. Um, this is a, a new exhibit in a partnership with the University of North Georgia and the Sixth Cavalry, Cavalry Museum. Um, this is a, the History Unearthed, The Six Battles of Curland is known as the most essential part of the Second World War in Europe and where the war in Europe finally ended. On multiple occasions, the Soviets lost more men in a single engagement than the United States lost in the entire war. Please join us as we welcome Dr. Steve Nicholas, anthropology archeology span professor at the University of North Georgia for the private premiere, which will be Friday, March 22nd from 5.30 to 7 p.m. The public premiere is Saturday, March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m at the Sixth Cavalry, Cavalry Museum, and again, that's free admission. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you, Ms. Simpkins. <clears throat> I know she went over a lot of numbers and figures there, but it's, it's kind of our report card, so to speak. And as you can tell by the numbers, this city is in great shape. And that's thanks in part to all of the great employees we have, the department heads that we have, and uh, special thank you for Miss Simpkins and this city council. They're taking very good care of your money. And any of these figures and, and, and the whole thing will be available for anybody to view at any time. But this city's in great shape. And I think that's due to the leadership of this council and the city manager and these department heads and these employees. So hats off to all of you guys. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is City Council comments. Mr. Child. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Mr. Crawford. Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Rogers. Nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item on the agenda is citizens' petitions and requests. We have none. Next item is executive session. We have none. Final item on the agenda is adjournment. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.